Have a seat. Science. Science, science, science. Science requires proof. And this is my first class with you. I will explain it my way. You. You are Muslim, right? Yes, sir. So you believe in God? Absolutely, sir. Is God good? Of course, sir. Is God all-powerful? Yes. My brother died of cancer, although he prayed to God to heal him. Most of us would attempt to help others who are ill, but God didn't. How is this God good then? Hmm? You can't answer, can you? Let's start again, young fella. Is God good? Yes, sir. Is Satan good? No. Who created Satan? That's right. Tell me, son, is there evil in this world? Yes, Professor. Evil is everywhere, isn't it? Yes, sir. And God did make everything, correct? Is there sickness, immorality, hatred, ugliness? All these terrible things exist in this world, don't they? Yes, Professor. So who created them? Science says you have five senses you use to identify and observe the world around you. Tell me, son. Have you ever seen God? No, Professor. Tell us if you have ever heard your God. No, Professor. Have you ever felt your God? Tasted your God? Melt your God? Have you ever had any sensory perception of God for that matter? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Yet you still believe in Him? Yes, Professor. According to empirical, stable, demonstrable protocol, science says your God doesn't exist. What do you say to that, my son? Nothing. I only have my faith. Yes, faith. And that is the problem which science has. Professor, is there such a thing as heat? Yes. And is there such a thing as cold? What kind of question is this? We all know there is cold. No, sir, there isn't. You can have lots of heat, super heat, mega heat, white heat, little heat or no heat. But we don't have anything as cold. We can hit 458 degrees below zero, which is no heat, but we can't go any further after that. There is no such thing as cold. Cold is only a word we use to describe the absence of heat. We cannot measure cold. Heat is energy. Cold is not the opposite of heat, sir, just the absence of it. What about darkness, Professor? Is there such a thing as darkness? Yes, what is night if there isn't darkness? <laughs> you are wrong again, sir. Darkness is the absence of something. You can have low light, normal light, bright light, flashing light. But if you have no light constantly, you have nothing. And it's called darkness, Professor. In reality, there is no such thing as darkness. If it is, you would be able to make darkness more darker, wouldn't you? So what's the point you're trying to make, young man? Sir, my point is your philosophical premise is flawed. Flawed? Can you explain how? Sir, you are working on the premise of duality. You argue that there is life and then there is death. A good God and a bad God. You are viewing the concept of God as something finite. Something we can measure. Sir, science can't even explain a thought. It uses electricity and magnetism but has never seen, much less fully understood either one. You view death as the opposite of life is to be ignorant of the fact that death cannot exist as a substantive thing. Death is not the opposite of life, just the absence of it. Now tell me, Professor, do you teach your students that they evolved from apes? If you are referring to the natural evolutionary process, yes, of course I do. Have you ever observed evolution with your own eyes, Professor? Since no one has ever observed the process of evolution at work and cannot even prove that this process is an ongoing individual. Are you not teaching your opinion, sir? Are you not a scientist, but a preacher professor? Is there anyone in the class 
who has ever seen Professor's brain, no one appears to have done so. So according to the established rules of empirical, stable, demonstrable protocol, science says that you have no brain, sir. <laughs> With all due respect, sir, how do we then trust your lectures, Professor? I guess you will have to take them on faith, son. That is it, Professor. The link between man and God is faith. Professor, it is not necessary to see something to believe in it. Sir, have you seen your 10th grandfather? No. So then how can you prove that he existed? My presence proves his existence because I have come from him. Exactly, Professor. The existence of this universe and life proves that there is a creator. That is all that keeps things moving and alive. Take your seat.